Hi everyone, it's Vicky here with another recipe. Now for today's recipe, it's something that you probably don't see very often. It may even be something that your grandma used to make. And it's a really easy recipe. It's, it's delicious and it's something that's so easy to do. You've probably got all the ingredients in the cupboard right now. And it's, because it's so easy, it's, it's a good one for children to get involved with. What we're gonna to make today is a good old fashioned bread pudding and it's a great way to use up any unwanted or unused bread that you've got or bread that's gone a bit stale it's perfect for that and the other ingredients you're going to put into we've got some milk we've got some butter well i'm using margarine soft margarine type stuff uh fruit basically currants raisins sultanas some brown sugar some ground mixed spice and some syrup and that's all it is so you've probably got most of those in the in the cupboard and you'll have your if you want to use up your bread perfect for that now the, the beauty of this recipe is it doesn't really matter about being too precise with the quantities so i've got quite a lot of bread here because i don't normally eat sliced bread but i had to use a few slices for a bit of an experiment that i was doing and i've got basically almost a whole loaf left so i'm going to make the bread pudding but if you've only got half that that's fine just scale down the other ingredients so i would say there's about a pound of bread here maybe a little bit more and all we've got to do first of all is just break it up into sort of small pieces to go into the bowl now i have taken off the crust i took off that this is quite soft so i've only taken the top crust off because i don't like to waste it but if it's particularly crusty you might want to uh, remove a bit more of it so that's all the bread just roughly um, ripped up into into smaller pieces now what i'm going to do now is i'm going to put the milk on to basically soften it all up Again, quantities are quite imprecise. I've got a pint in here, which I'm going to start with about a pint. I might need more, um, so we'll try to start with. And if I need more, I can always add more, but starting with a pint, as I say, for about a pound of, of bread. And then you just get your hands in there and give it a good, a good squidge. I think that might be about enough, actually. You can soon tell if it's not enough you, because what you want is for it all to sort of completely soak the bread that's definitely enough i would say um and i suppose what you're doing is sort of rendering the bread down now, so it looks a bit more like a cake mixture and that's and you can see that's what it looks like so i'm just going to squidge it down a bit more and what we need to do now is we need to leave it to sit for about half an hour just to get that milk to soak in and really soak up that into that bread and after half an hour we can judge again whether we might need to add a bit more but i think that's about enough okay so that's what it looks like after i've done that so i'm going to leave it for half an hour uh, to just sit there and while that uh, milk is soaking into the bread, we need to prepare our tin to bake it in. Now, I'm using a nine inch tin because I'm using quite a big mixture here and basically you just need to grease it in the normal way. You don't need to line it. It's, uh, it should be OK if you grease it um, and get your oven lit, a gas mark for 180 degrees. And I'm going to do it in the baking oven of my Agra. So, um, so that's the tin prepared if you're doing a smaller quantity i would say most an average recipe for an average size bread pudding would be half the quantities that we're doing today you could probably get by with a seven inch tin okay so after half an hour it's it's just about the right consistency i would say it's not too wet um you can tell when it's got this sort of dropping consistency so i'm going to add the other ingredients now I've got this soft margarine, um, there's about four ounces there to go with a, over, it's over a pound of bread here, so that's, uh, I think that's enough. Um, and I've got some brown sugar, soft brown sugar, about four ounces, that's going in. And about um, 
There's about 12 ounces of, of currants, raisins and sultanas here that's going in. There we go. And basically I'm just going to um, mix it with my hands and that's why I say it's quite good for the children to have a go at because they can get really messy and just make sure everything is all well mixed through the... Um, Through the through this this sort of bread, bread and milk, <laughs> looking quite good. The most important thing, obviously, to make sure that that um, the fat is spread throughout the margarine because um, if you leave it in lumps, that's when you start you get holes in your finished product. If you've ever had holes in your finished cakes, it's possibly because the margarine or the butter hasn't been mixed in thoroughly and when it melts it, it sort of leaves a hole behind in the cake so that's the most important bit so i just need to add the spice this is ground mixed spice the sort of thing that you make christmas cakes and putting christmas cakes gives it that nice sort of spicy flavor and i've got i'm going to put about well, again, no, no hard and fast rules, about three tablespoons. Needs to be quite tasty. It's quite a lot, that is, actually, but I think it, it's... There we go. Maybe a little bit more. Okay. And I'm going to mix that, mix that through. Because it is meant to be quite a, a spicy, a spicy pudding. So you can do whatever you whatever you like if you don't want it too too spicy put put less in if you like it a bit more spicy put more in. it's not going to be spicy like chilies or anything like that it's it's just to give it a nice flavor i'm just going to make a bit more because i have made quite a lot of uh a lot of mixture so i've actually put five tablespoons in that it's to sound quite a lot but you do want that nice flavor to come through now i've got a confession to make because i've actually never made this before would you believe my mum makes it all the time but i i've never made it and because i had all this bread left over i thought i'd give it a go so this this amount of spice is a bit hit and miss We'll see what it's like when it comes out. I'll let you know when I tasted it. And if it was too much, then I'll I'll let you know so you can adjust yours accordingly. But um, we'll give it a go. Right, that's all mixed in. I think just keep mixing. You can see if there's any light coloured bits still in there. Um, there we go. So all it needs to do now is put it into the tin. It does look like a cake mix now. Okay. I'm using a, a silicon spatula because I find these are really good for getting all the last little bits out of the bowl. I hate waste, but then I suppose if you've got someone who likes to lick out the, the contents of the bowl, then that's fine, but that's not, uh, okay, so I've got it all out, you can see there's quite a, quite a lot of mixture in here, it's quite heavy actually, but that's how it's meant to be, so we'll just smooth it around, make it level, there we go, and the last little piece that we need to do is to Put the treacle, well, syrup, golden syrup. I'm going to put some golden syrup. I need a knife. So open the treacle. Oh dear, this isn't going to open very easily. That is the trouble with them. Um, A bottle opener might do the job. There you go, let's try the bottle opener. Will that go? Oops. Oh, there we go. There's a 
So I'm going to just drizzle some of this golden syrup over the top of the, the cake. Okay, give it a nice sort of glaze over the top so that when it's when it's finished it will have that lovely lovely shiny sweet topping on there okay so i've just glazed the top there with the syrup and we can pop it in the oven it's going in as i say gus mark 480 degrees Okay, so that's in the oven now and uh, we'll check it in a in about I'm gonna I, because I said I've not done this before so I don't actually know how long it's going to take but I'm gonna check it after about half an hour and let's see where we've got to I think it might take a bit longer but we'll we'll see okay so the bread pudding has been in the oven for about an hour and a half altogether now it's quite a long time I wasn't expecting it to be that long um, so I'm going to get it out now and uh, and there we go that's about right you, know, you know when it's done because you just press it like you would a cake a sponge cake and it sort of bounces back and it feels spongy and that's uh, that means it's done Okay, so because this is a spring form pan, which is really good, here I can just unclip it and it's very easy to get the, oops, let's have a have it now. there we go, and there it is. Let's move that. I just put the hot pan in the in the sink okay so there it is look at that I'm not going to pick it up because it is quite hot but I'm going to put it on a cooling rack now and you can see what it looks like perhaps I'll cut a piece later and post it so you can see there you are beauty of a spring prawn pan of course is that it has a base so I could actually leave it on the base to serve it so there we have old-fashioned bread pudding delicious really easy make it from all those things that you've got hiding in the cupboard. Bye for now.